So, you've played a couple of strategy games in your life. Tried out Fire Emblem Awakening or Three Houses, had a good time. Now you hear there's a new kid on the block, Triangle Strategy, and you've decided you're going to give it a shot. You'll be fine, right? <laughs> Wrong! You see, Triangle Strategy harkens back to the glory days of difficult strategy RPGs, like Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre, in that it will wipe the floor with you if you give it the chance. Especially if you decide to play on hard. But it's also a very, very good game, and I highly recommend you play it. So how will you survive? Well, you've come to the right place. Here are my gameplay suggestions and tips for the Triangle Strategy early game based on my own hard mode experiences. This guide is broken down into two videos with tips for both phases of the game, combat and exploration. In this video, we'll be discussing the basics of combat. Let's go. First off, utilize your buffs and debuffs. Many strategy games offer abilities that boost your stats, reduce the stats of enemies, or put status effects on units. From haste, to blind, to attack and defense boosts and more, there are plenty of options available to you. But, in many games, it's often better to just keep hitting the enemy and healing your units to find victory. That's not the case here. Utilizing skills such as Benedict's Raging Beast and Huet's Blinding Arrow can make all the difference when enemies have as much health and damage as you do. Ensuring you have the damage to finish that enemy mage before she has the chance to torture your party is key. And in Triangle Strategy, offensive debuffs typically also deal damage, so you aren't losing DPS for the chance to cripple an enemy. By using your abilities early, you're also using your TP efficiently, which takes us to our next point. Use TP early for maximum benefit. All abilities cost TP to use, and your characters regenerate one TP per turn at minimum. You constantly have an influx of resources to use, and in a major departure from the original demo version of the game, all characters now start with 3 TP, the maximum at the start of the game. Which means you should always use your abilities! Every turn that goes by with your characters resting at the TP max is a waste of those resources. Additionally, many of the best abilities only cost 1 TP, making them essentially free to use in the opening turns of a battle. So bulwark up, cast those flame shields, and smoke them while you got them. Because the third item on our list is time your attacks. Knowing when and where to attack is a vital skill to have in triangle strategy, and the next few tips will help you decide the best course of action once blades begin to clash. Sure, casting that scorch spell on an enemy soldier is fun, yes, but it's much better if you hold off until him and his buddies are clustered up in a cuddle puddle of ensuing barbecue so you can hit them all at once. Dealing 90 damage across three dudes is a much more efficient use of resources than dealing 30 to 1 after all. And as most of the best damaging abilities cost 2 TP or more to use, you can't keep up a constant stream of offense for long. For you melee fighters out there, this is an important consideration as well. Sometimes you're going to want to use your big ability that deals loads of damage. Whereas other times, a simple basic attack will do all the damage you need while conserving your TP for a future turn. And yes, it might be tempting to charge in deep to secure the finishing blow on a fleeing enemy. But, but, if it leaves you open to attack on multiple fronts, it's probably not worth it. After all, positioning is key in triangle strategy. So I'm really going to try and hammer this into your head, okay? Are you ready? Listen. Listen real close here. I want you to pay attention to this. Always be flanking. One of the most vital to understand mechanics in triangle strategy is the previously mentioned follow-up attacks and backstab criticals. This might be an obvious tip, but seriously, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to always be considering where your units are ending their turns and what direction they're facing. Not only should you always try to attack a unit from behind when it's safe to do so, you should also try to place your units in a position where they can perform a follow-up attack with another unit further down the turn order. This is true even for units that aren't going to be attacking for their action or aren't really meant to be physical attackers in general. For example, 
Did Jila spend her turn stitching someone's face back on? Consider moving her next to that enemy swordsman who's menacing your backline before ending her turn. That way, once your melee fighters can stride up, they can give that swordsman the one-two punch with her. And you shouldn't underestimate the amount of damage your mages and healers can actually do in melee either. If Frederica is out of TP, but there's a foe nearby, walk up and slap him upside the head with a book. That extra 10 to 15 damage could make all the difference by the end of the fight, especially if it allows for another follow-up attack as well. However, as in any good strategy game, the enemy has all the same tricks that you do. When positioning yourself for a follow-up attack, you want to ensure you aren't leaving yourself open to one, which takes us to tip number five. Defensive formations, turtling, and you. Due to the staggered nature of the turn order in Triangle Strategy, it's important that you don't let your units get caught out in a vulnerable position. Two or three solid hits is enough to down squishy units like mages and seriously cripple all but the hardiest of melee fighters. And if the enemy gets you trapped in a flanked position, that's no good. So what should you do? Move forward slowly at first and maintain your formation. You don't need to move your maximum move range and you can't be hit by follow-up attacks if your units are covering each other's sides. Take your time, buff up, and let the enemy come to you. Once you see how they're approaching, you can choose targets to gang up on and pick them off while still protecting your sides and vulnerable characters. Of course, these are just the basics, and different story missions will require you to adapt accordingly. Maybe you need to rush forward to protect an NPC, or you only have so many turns to complete your objective. Changing your strategy on the fly is a staple of tactics games, and that's still the case with Triangle Strategy. So stay loose, keep an open mind, and you'll find yourself in the lap of victory in no time. And stay tuned for part two of this Titanium Tips duology, where we'll cover strategy and decision making off the battlefield. Thank you all so much for watching. If this guide was of use to you, consider subscribing so you can catch the rest of my Triangle Strategy coverage. Let me know if there are other questions you have about Triangle Strategy in the comments, and share this video with a friend who's playing the game and might be struggling. You never know what'll help, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can. If you want to help me out, channel memberships are live. Five bucks a month, that'll get you exclusive emotes and badges to use on the channel, as well as some early sneak peeks of what I'm currently working on, and a shout out every Friday. It helps me keep making content for you to enjoy as I continue to grow the channel. Thank you again. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.